thank God, thank God for you today. Let, let's go ahead and welcome our first time guests. If you're here, we just are so blessed that you come for the very first time. You're really our honored guest today. We hope that you were able to find a good parking space. Amen. And not too far away because some, some of us take those good parking spaces. Shame on you if you did that. Amen. Our regular people. What do you mean? Yeah, well, you can park a little bit further away so other people can enjoy a closer parking space. Give me a good amen. Amen. Praise God. Didn't mean to get on you right away, but I didn't eat. I didn't eat very well today. Amen. I had two breakfast bars. How about you? Amen. So I'm kind of mean today, right, everybody? Let's welcome our online audience right now. Yeah, we're grateful that you're, we're living faith, church faith that you can see as we gather, grow, and go. And we're all about going, and we'll speak about that in a moment, even throughout our message today. Do you have your message notes handy? You're going to need them if you don't. Raise your hand high, even in the sanctuary, right there online. They're going to get dropped down in front of you, and you'll see them. You'll be able to fill in the blanks. Not really, but they'll, 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 at least you'll be able to know what we're knowing in the sanctuary at Living Faith Church. And if you're ever in, you know, the South Texas area, come see the people of God here at Living Faith. I know that's a, a bucket list for some of you, which I'm, I can't believe, but we're honored that that would be something that you'd want to do, come to Living Faith um, soon, and so we would welcome you in doing that in the name of Jesus today. Text a couple of people right now, Sanctuary Online, tell them to tune in, uh, share a link, go forward on that. Later on, it'll be on YouTube, Living Faith Essay. You can find us there, and go ahead and copy that, and then share it to a, a friend. If everyone need, if, if ever there been a moment right now that we need a message from God, it's this message, so go ahead and share that, because it's all about Jesus and Him healing us today. Amen. They call May Mental uh, Health Month, and I'm, I'm grateful that it is because we need um, healing in our minds, all of us today. We need to calm ourselves. Next week, I'll conclude the series with calming my anxious mind about how our mind races. And so we're in part three of winning the war in our mind today. And I want to teach you today through God's word on how to hit the delete button on all the negative thoughts that sometimes come to our head. And so do you ever like look around and wonder how you can escape the negativity? You know, I, I do because you think, man, there's so much negativity in the world and uh, maybe some circumstances. Maybe it's not so much where you're at, but maybe we need to change our mind, right. our mindset and the perspective that we have so we get healthier and better today. And so there's a funny story about this man that be, he decides to become a monk. But they're strict. That monastery has strict no talking. You have to have silence. Very quiet. And there, he wishes to join the ranks. And the head monk tells him, you're going to have to not say anything. Every year, every five years, you can say two words. And that's all you can say. We discipline ourselves here not to speak, only to hear from God. So the five years goes by. And his two words, when he comes out, his two words are, I'm cold. And that was it. You know, five years later, comes back, gets his food, and, you know, and he goes, bed hard. His bed was hard. <laughs> five years later, 15 years in this monastery, he just spoke in those words. Next, it says, what's your two words? 15 years later, he says, I'm leaving. <laughs> and the head monk goes, good, all you did was complain since you got here. <laughs> You'll get that at three in the morning, some of you. You ever wonder, maybe you have a pretty decent life and you still complain about it? Don't look at your husband right now or look at her. <laughs> she has you and she's still complaining, right? Um, but, you know, maybe something you don't like about it, but you still have room to complain. Your mind is a battlefield and most of life's battles are won and lost in your, your mind and your head today. And so the first thought might be, as it goes forward today, life it really, it, it, life it is often uh, what, what you reflect on, the uh, results of often what you think. And so life is often, man, this is what I'm thinking about. And you get that. What you say is what you get. What you think about is what you get in life today. So what comes into your mind will come out of your life. Right? And so I wish I had some Baptist people up here saying amen, amen, choir, amen. So if I can, I can't have a positive life if I'm going to have a negative mind all the time, right? And so I think it's time that we pray. 
And that God may help us today to hear all that he ha- we have to hear today from his word. Father, touch the people of living faith in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come. And it says that it's our, the, the spirit of God is our comforter now. It's our helper. And I, I thank you, Lord. Help us to listen today. Help bring comfort right now. There are people uh, hearing the sound of my voice right now that need a miracle from God. And I pray through the worship, Lord, that they're getting closer, Lord. Now, now uh, bring it to a full finish, God, where we receive our healing and have strategy right now about renewing our mind and finding truth in God's word and having the knowledge that you are the way, the truth and the life. In the name of Jesus, we all pray. All of God's children say amen. amen. There's a key thought that we've uh, looked at and been our theme scripture, and it's found in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 5. It says this, 10, 3, 3 and 5, it says, For we live in the world, but we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world, world right? And so we're, 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 the kingdom of God is upside down. You want revenge? Of course you do. You want to be angry at that person? But Jesus said, no, there's a new way. And his disciple, his apostle Paul said, you know what? Instead of revenge, love your neighbor. Instead of having enemies, pray for your enemies, right? Instead of telling them to go to H-E double hockey stick, you know, don't tell them that anymore. You tell them, you know what? God bless you and God loves you. Amen. And you walk away from the fight and you go pray in your prayer closet. Give me a good amen. On the contrary, it says we have divine power to demolish. Somebody shout strongholds. Stronghold. A stronghold is a stronghold. The stronghold, I looked it up, and it means something that has a hold of you very strongly and is not going to let you go and wants to drag you away. We demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself against the knowledge of God, and that is big time. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to the obedience of Christ, right, everybody? And by strongholds, Paul wasn't talking about a physical fortress. That's what they had in those days. But he was talking about a a habit, an addiction, a a, a behavior pattern, a sin problem that that would be on us and hold us so tightly that it was going to drag us to places that we didn't want to be dragged to. Hurt and pain that would cause us because of that addiction, because we're given over to that. And all of us have some sort of kryptonite or something that sets us free. But the knowledge of God comes in, which is big time. And the knowledge of God is knowing God. That truth sets us free. Is truth a concept? Is truth an essence? No, truth is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the light, Jesus told his disciples. And he tells us that this morning at Living Faith. So if we know Jesus, we know that that stronghold can be broken or loosened today. And let, let, let get us free from that thing today. Amen. We've learned it the, the, uh, the strongholds in our life because you either know truth or you don't know the truth. And all of us, because you're here on a Sunday morning, you know truth. You know Jesus this morning. Amen. Because of that, we are free today. The mind's incredibly powerful. When Jesus, when, when the Bible says that you're fearfully, wonderfully made, boy, did he do something in our brains and our minds that we've learned about that how the mind, you know the mind, you go to sleep, but your mind never does. That's why you have dreams. That's why you wake up sometimes upset. That's why you wake up with garbage in because you watch this horror movie and you're scared now that Freddy's going to come get you or Jason. That was the last thing you saw. And it, are, are you, you think about things. Maybe you see something on television. And that's the last thing. One, one time I was watching this like, movie that was really intense, action-powered, but packed movie. And it, you know, there's about this guy running away. He was a good guy, but the cops thought, the police officers thought that he was going to, uh, he'd done something wrong. And the, the gangsters were on him. The, the, the mafia was after him too. So two forces were at, y'all saw that movie, right? <laughs> Two, two forces were, and he was trying to vindicate his name. And so you, I went to sleep with that. And you know what happened to me when I went to sleep? Somebody was after me in the dream. The police were after me. The mafia was after me. Because how could I not think that after I'm going to bed? So if we go to bed with maybe something like the Word of God, of dreams, or we have an app that's a, a good app. There's this wonderful app I discovered during the series called the Abide app. And you can find it. It's free. You can download it. You can plug that in. There's even a point where you can sleep and hear that. And I listen to it on my earbuds and I go quickly to sleep. And I slept real well last night. Give me a good amen. 
And so, you, so can you. God's given you the tools and the ability to do that today. So our mind is powerful. So today I want to speak to you about reframing your thinking today. And so there are these pathways that come into our mind. And every thought that you have, there's a pathway that happens in your brain. So the more that you think that thought, the more that that pathway is given to. And almost like, again, walking in your grass that one or where the dog always walks around the backyard, there's already a pathway and it's well-worn. So the more you think that path, it can become more well-worn, whatever it might be. So you have the choice today to think good thoughts, Amen. that God loves you, God has a plan for you, or you can think some maybe bad thoughts of fear or what's going to happen or we're all, this world is headed, you know, for Hell in a handbasket, but yet God is still good. You can still think that. You understand that? So the more that you think that path, the more that it's easier going to become for you to become that. Because that's what you're thinking. Do you understand that today? Are you still with me this morning? And, and so uh, every time you think, you create that pathway. The more you think it, the easier it is to think. Right? It didn't happen overnight today. So expand your morning today. Expand it this morning. There are mental filters that you have. And these are reasoning today. And sometimes our mental filters, check this out, they're bad filters. Because we filter stuff through maybe the thought that's not, it's warped and you see stuff that you shouldn't be seeing because it's warped in that sense. So let me go ahead and give you this thought today. There's bad situations when you're growing up. And now every time you see a situation, you filter it through that and you're, 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 it, it's not right, of course. And the facts are the facts, but you filter it all wrong today. For example, you grew up around abusive men, male or female today. And so it's hard for you to trust men. Or it's hard for you to maybe trust people or an authority figure. You won't submit to somebody because you submitted last time and it, it brought you pain. Or maybe it's like this. Parents always said, hey, rich people are bad. They're awful. And so now you start prospering and you feel guilty about it. God's blessing you, and you don't feel that you should take, all because of the filter that you have when you process that. Y'all, are y'all with me today? Yes. And, and so filters, go ahead and show me the next slide. Filters can help you see life and shape life. And so filters, aren't they great? They, they give you different feelings, right? Some of y'all use the filters too much on Instagram, but that's okay. Because when I see you on Sunday morning, I go, that's not the way you looked when you took that picture at that party, right? Who you, so there's truth in life. And so you have this mental thinking that's a bias, amen? And we're looking at Macaulay Culkin too much today, right, everybody? There's this default filter, and it may not be accurate, but that's what we're thinking because we filter everything through that filter in our life. And so why is it that two people can see the same thing? Car accident happened across the street. Two people, well, one guy saw it. He said, you know, that guy was on a cell phone. No, the other guy ran that stop sign. No, he didn't see that. They see different things because it's the perspective that you see. Two people see the same thing, but they get different results and different perspectives as they bring it out and bring it forth. You all know what I'm talking about? So it's not the facts that are different. Somebody shout, it's the filter. Yeah. And so two people see the, the, the situation differently today. And so the boss walks in. And he tells everybody, you know what, I'm going to meet with you one on one. You know, I'm going to go tell you about our profit loss and this is what we're doing. And he goes and gives you constructive feedback. He says, you know what, you'd be a great employee, but sometimes you just care what other people think too much. And you need to go on and do that thing. And that guy gets all offended and he says, they don't appreciate me. That guy had to pull me into the office. But yet he had a meeting 30 minutes later with your peer worker and he told him the same thing. And that guy says like this, you know what, man, I appreciate my boss. I'm going to become a better employee. Thank God, even during this hard time, I got a job and I'm still employed, right? And he looks at it differently than the first guy that gets all offended and hurt, right, everybody? Or maybe it's church. You walk into living faith and you go, man, this is the greatest thing since, you know, sliced bread. I love this church. I love the music they play. I love that guy, you know, that's up there talking and telling those dumb you know, jokes. I love that guy. I love the church. Everybody, you know, said hello to me. And they love this place. But the next guy walks in right next to him, same row. And he goes, oh, that song was boring. The, who they think they are up there singing all that. I saw her, you know, and all that, you know, and, and they, they hate this place. And they walk out, what? 
two different perspectives, right? Or maybe it's like the, the one that read the news sources that were 24-7 glued to the television. And depending on your source that you got your news from, whether, whether it was, you know, what I'm learning about the news, <laughs> there's not one that's right. They all have their skew and all have their agenda, isn't it? And that's why it's unhealthy to watch the news so much. And so I'm going to tread lightly, but I'm going to go ahead and go there. News. So we need more guns, that one side says. We need less guns, the other side says. And then depending where you're at, amen, the facts are the same, but you have different filters to filter it through, don't you? Yeah. And so not that the facts are different. It's our filter where we see it today. Remember the children of Israel when they were, this is a filter that's incredible here. It's, it's been going on a long time before what happened this past week or even before that week and what's going to happen next week, how we're going to see something through a filter. The children of Israel were faced with going into a promised land. And Moses sent out 12 spies. And he says, guys, I need you to go just examine the land, see what we're faced with, because God has promised this land to us. And the 12 spies knew that, all 12. They went back. So you know what happened? Two came back and said, man, it's the greatest thing. Man, this is awesome. They got grapes this size and honey, and it's a land of, you know, it's awesome. We can't wait to go in, Mo. Come on, let's get ready to go in. Ten came back, though. And isn't that the majority sometimes? The negative always rule. The negative have never something to say. They saw the same thing. Twelve saw the same thing. Ten came back and said this. They said, you know what? We're going to get annihilated. There are giants in that land. There are cities that are fortified. We're like, we're like grasshoppers, Mo. <laughs> we can't go in, man. We're like little grasshoppers. They didn't see that God was bigger. They didn't see that God was mightier. They didn't see that they, they felt like, well, we feel like grasshoppers, all of them, but we can overcome right now. Amen. Amen. And so the negative right now in the na name of Jesus, you have right now the facts. The, not, it's not the facts that are different. It's the filter that's different today. Amen. So not only the filter, I want to introduce you to something else. And therapists charge a whole bunch of money for what I'm about to teach you. And you're going to get it free. You can put something in the offering later. Amen. Give me a good amen. And they call it a frame about framing your thinking today. It's the same situation that you're faced with, but it's how you frame the situation. It determines how you see it. And the tool is called reframing. So look, look on the, it's also in your, let's go ahead and say the definition of reframing and the thought process together. Reframing on three. One, two, three. Reframing. It's creating a different way of looking at a situation or relationship by changing its meaning. It's how we look at something that the other person is looking at, the whole room is looking at, and how different it's going to be today. And so we can reframe the day. Show me the slide if you could so I can help out some people today and help out myself again. And so you can go ahead and reframe something like today. Today is going to be an awful day. I didn't get much sleep. Um, the dog kept me up all night. Uh, you know what? They came in late. They, I was worried about them. They didn't get in. And so you can go ahead and frame the day that it's going to be an awful day. It's going to be like this. It's going to be gloom, gloom, gloom. It's going to be a gloom, gloom, gloom day. The facts are the same. You didn't get much sleep. Or you can wake up and say something like this. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. We can easily go this way and gloom, gloom, gloom. Or we can go this way. Thank God for this day. I woke up breathing. Some people didn't wake up breathing today. God has an assignment for my life. God has a plan for my life. Amen. And you begin to reframe the day. Amen. I'm going to be coming back and forth in a moment to that. So let me go, let me go over here real quick and let's talk about that today. And, and so you cannot control what has happened to you. All of us have these situations that happened to us last night, this past week. A week before it, 20 years ago, you can't control. Sometimes it happens, life happens, and in your life. But you can control how you frame it. Right, everybody? And so I want you to think about your life right now. I want to slow it down a little bit and think about life right now. Your expectations in your mind. You wanted something by now. You thought in this moment, you thought by now, uh, you would be experiencing this. And you're experiencing the opposite. 
Some of us in this room, some of us that are watching right now. By this time, I thought my life would be better. By this time, I thought we would have enough of this or that. By this time, I thought my body would, the medications would be working. And so maybe you worked real hard on a degree and you thought, you know what? I got qualified, but now I got this job. They're underpaying me. I don't have the job that I wanted. I'm in even in a different field than I went after my degree. It could be maybe you dreamed of a great marriage and you ended up with a broken heart and you're divorced and pain is all over you today. Maybe you thought, you know, by this time I thought we would be out of debt and we're more in debt and we have more credit card debt. I, I don't know. At this point, I thought my life would be better and I expected something different and it's not happening in my life today. And if anyone can identify with you, of course, Jesus can. But there's this guy, this human being that went through life just like you and I. He wasn't God's son, but he became a son. And his name was Paul, the apostle Paul. And you see his life, how he even says in Romans chapter 7, he said, those things that I don't want to do, I do. And those things that I should do, I don't do because my mind is always doing the things that I don't want to do. And he had this. But then you see him begin to wrestle where he gets more suffering and pain in his life. And he still begins to rise and he gets stronger in his mind because the books that he wrote to the early church prove it. And it's not that he's outside preaching in the open air. He's actually in prison when he writes most of the New Testament to us. And he writes books of joy. He writes books of perseverance. And he writes books that we're gonna, I'm going to still make it. Because he frames his life differently because he got stronger. Amen. Amen. And he worked out and he trained his mind. So this is how Paul really could have framed a situation. And it could have got a little bit this way. And so I found this scripture in Philippians 1, 12. And this is the new whiner's version. It's the whining version, okay? And this is what he said. Now, now I want you to know, brothers. <laughs> Me too, sisters. That what has happened to me really stinks, right? And as a result of the hell I've been going through, oh, I'm quitting living faith. And I'm never going back to church. And one guy in the back row really likes that. Where's that version? That's my version. It's not real. Amen. It, maybe it is in our heads today, but it's not real. Paul was so enthusiastic. And so joyful that he wrote this book called the Book of Joy. And it was called the Philippian Book of Joy. Because he wrote them. And over and over the theme of it is be joyful, be joyful, be joyful. And the dude that was writing it, Paul, he was in jail. He was under house arrest. He was uh, uh, over and over. And it wasn't a pleasant place to be because Paul was this man that was always going, planting churches. He loved a man of action with the gospel. Can you imagine being isolated? It's like the pandemic 24 He never got out of the pandemic, Paul, to the end of his life. He was always locked in today. And so he reframed his circumstances so he was joyful no matter where he was at. And he was always content. And you know what the good news is? You can do the same. You can do the same. You've been given that ability by God to reframe your thoughts today. So the real version of it was this, Philippians 1, 12. Now you can say it with me today. Let's read it together on three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear to the whole palace guard. That I am in chains for Christ today. Yeah. Uh, he continues to say, show me the next scripture, verse 14, right there. And because of my chains, my brothers and most of my brothers and sisters have now become confident. Well, that dude's in jail. I can at least preach the gospel on the outside. I'm free, right? If he's still preaching in this fashion and in a dungeon and, and, and under guard, I, I might be able to share Jesus with my neighbor now. And, 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 and dare all to, to more to proclaim the gospel without, without, without. Yeah. And so Paul, 
You know, here, here he goes. Show me the slide if you could. Thank you. You're doing such a great job. You're helping me out. Paul said, yeah, you know what, man, my life, you know, I was preaching the gospel. Now I'm under this house arrest and I'm, ch- you know, always chained and I can't do anything. And all I'm, ri- I'm writing these letters to these guys. I don't know if they're even getting them anymore. These Timothy guys sent him a letter. Titus, I sent him a letter. I don't know if they're even getting them. No, Paul said this. He said, you know what? Because of my chains now, where's the sunlight? There it comes through, right there. Because of my chains now, I have this guard that comes every eight hours, and he's, he, he's a captive audience. I'm preaching to him every eight, and they're sending a new guard in every eight hours, and they can't, the whole guard, I'm winning them all to Jesus because I'm passing it, to, and the gospel's being advanced. And I, I'm writing these letters with my heart. In my soul, and I, I have time to concentrate now, and I know everything that I'm writing, just like this text message that I'm sending, it's my heart, man, yeah. and it's changing lives, and it's going to, and, and little do I know that one day it might change a church called Living Faith, amen, yeah. and it's going to set me free, and the gospel was advanced because of Paul's perseverance, his contentment, and his joy, and the gospel can be advanced if you frame light. The, 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 the right things in your life today. And if you frame the perspective that you have, if you choose not to frame it right, then let's go ahead and keep on whining and doing the thing today. Amen. Amen. All of us don't have good stuff in our lives. There's something. If you hear my story, I'll hear your story, and we can whine together. My marriage, you can say, my challenges, my heartbreak, my health. Uh, we, we have something. But for the most part, because you're sitting here and for the most part, because you're listening right now, you have a pretty decent life. You made it to church this morning. There are little things that can get into our lives that can frame the light of God away from our lives. You understand that today? And so I'm asking you to right now, don't get your eyes off the goodness of God. Don't don't get your eyes off the goodness of God. In the middle of everything right now, the goodness of God still prevails. Right, everybody? And so I'm going to give you three tools today about reframing your story of your life today and reframing your relationships so they're what God is writing for your life today. Amen? So these are three tools. Number one is this. Thank God for what didn't happen. Man, don't you ever think that? Car accident, you know, well... Thank God. You know what? Hey, they, they didn't die. There's a car accident. It's a fender bender. And, you know, we got accident forgiveness. Praise God. Because we haven't had a... That's a good thing, right? Yeah. There was this illustration about this girl. And she sent a text message home in college, different town. And she sent a text message to mom and dad. She texted a bunch. Amen. She was a girl. Amen. <laughs> so she begins to text, dear mom and dad, I don't want you to be alarmed. I'm okay. But here's what happened. I met this guy. We fell in love after a one night stand and I'm expecting a baby. I got pregnant. I know you didn't want to be grandparents yet, but I think that we can we can do it. Uh, The the man that um, I met and I fell in love with, he's going to move in with me into the apartment that you're paying for. But he's going to get a job one day. He's going to he's going to get a job and work. You're going to really like him. And um, once he gets off probation, he'll be able to get a better job. Yeah, mom and dad. So it, it's going to get, you know, I know things are going to get better. And um, we're, we're going to be able to, you know, get a better place and the baby. And I can't wait for you to be grandparents and that sort of thing. And that was the end of the text message. And then, you know what? Another, she, the parents kept watching. And those little bubbles were coming up. She's writing something else. She's writing something else. The next thing that she wrote and the big thing that appeared, she says, you know what, mom and dad? That really didn't happen. But I did get an F in chemistry. And I just wanted to bring everything in perspective of what could have happened, but didn't happen. Right, everybody? And maybe in your life, you got to give thanks for what didn't happen. Amen. Yeah, maybe you missed some goals at work and you didn't get the bonus. Man, we really needed the bonus. Well, you still have a job. And you're still employed and you can get the bonus next time. Maybe, again, there's some things that didn't work out and you had to take a step back, but that's okay. You can still take a forward step in a moment today after you recover. Thank God for what didn't happen. The second thought is this. Practice pre-framing. So if your thoughts are this way, you know what, man? 
this is going to be so hard. I'm not going to enjoy the, the family gathering because he's going to be there and we always fight or I can't stand him. You're already going to preframe it negatively. Right. What if you preframe it? Hey, I'm going to have fun in Jesus name. <laughs> if it's even just me, I'm going to love it. I love a challenge. So you know what? I thank God the last time we met, I hadn't seen them, but I'm going to see them this time and things are going to get better. So you preframe it today. I want to tell you something about that's happened to me with preframing that happened uh, seasons ago. To the honor and glory of Jesus. I told you how Irma and I began to kind of walk and do our thing. And I I saw these bikes whiz by me as we were walking. And I thought, you know what? I can ride a bike. I I rode a bike when I was in fifth grade. So I got on a bike and, you know, we kind of bought this cheapy bike, nice bike, but it was cheap. Amen. We got it, you know, $75. And I began to ride it. And I go, man, this thing hurts. When I ride the bike, it hurts. So I got this, I got this spandex stuff because you can get everything at Walmart, right? And it didn't hurt as much, right? And I began to ride a little bit. And then I, you know, I started seeing these hanging, uh, getting thoughts from these guys that rode a little bit more. And I asked bike guru, I said, hey, you know, he said, he said you should wear a helmet. Because if you don't wear a helmet, it's not when you fall. It's not if you fall, it's when you fall. And you're going to fall. You're going to need a helmet. And so I remember um, riding and I, um, I was... Uh, I was trying to do this kind of night ride real fast. And I said, I'm going to go ride a little bit, you know, before, before I have to come in, before it gets dark. And so I went to the OP Schnabel and I started going on the trails. And I can talk about Mexicans because I'm a Mexican. <laughs> Don't get mad at me, okay? Let's talk about another race. Then we're going to get, it all, we're going to get messed up. But, so there's these two Mexican girls, I could tell, amen, as I was approaching them. And, and I had to go around them and... Um, when I went around them, I didn't see this big rock that was in the way. And I, and I thought I was going to be Mr. Cool. Hey, these guys wear baseball caps. I'm going to wear a baseball cap. I was wearing a baseball cap and not a helmet. And when I went around them, I, that rock, I hit the rock. And, man, I, I, I hit hard. I hit everything, knee, head, everything. And, but I bounced back up because I thought, somebody's going to see me down. I'm going to be embarrassed. <laughs> but I was hurt. And I could tell my head was hurting and my knee was hurting, and just everything, and the bike was still, so instead of riding the two miles that I planned to do, I turned the bike around, and I went back to my truck, wounded, and um, what was funny about the two Mexican girls, (laughs) they said this, and I'm going to try to repeat it, like, they said, I, that dude fell so hard as I was riding away, (laughs) and I was riding, I said, boy, I didn't, boy, didn't I? That brother fell hard, amen. When I got better, I got a little bit nervous, and I remember the first time I did five miles. I said, I'm going to go on a five-mile journey. I knew the course to take. I knew how long it would be, you know, from O.P. Schnabel all the way to the Drury Inn and the back trails. And, and you, so, but I, I just got nervous, so I said, you know, I had a bike helmet now. I got, you know, a little bit more improved. And so I didn't see how I put my bike helmet on. And I put it on backwards because I was so nervous. And I started taking off. And do you know there's still bullies even when you're in your 40s, 50s? And you better not be a bully. <laughs> and so these, these guys were like the Cobra Kai, man. I mean, they were like mean guys. They were the Cobra. And they were like on their bikes and they were passing me. And they had passed me already once because I was, you know, bump pedaling along doing the five miles. And then all of a sudden, they come back because they've already finished five miles. They did it like in a nanosecond. They came back, and they were approaching me this way, and they saw my bike helmet. And the bully of the group said this. He said, ah, that dude has his helmet on backwards. <laughs> and I kept riding. I go, boy, didn't I? And I, I didn't want to stop to put it on, so I finally, you know, that, that, was, that was another issue there today. Now what I do whenever I go on a bike ride I pray real hard. I say, Jesus, protect me all the way. You know, I'm getting a little bit. I don't want something to happen to me. I want to be safe. But I want to endure. I want to go on. And so that was the first of many times that I kept going. First, I did five miles. Then I did 10 miles. Then I did 20 miles. And then one day, I said, you know what? They're connecting all these trails. I'm going to go from one point of the end to the next point. And that was like 30 miles. And I trained myself. And I went, this is the day I'm going to do 30 miles. And I did 30 miles on that day. And it was a goal I met. And there was endurance. And the pre-framing of it was this. 
that you can go on in life and endure. So now, whenever I'm faced with a challenge, I have endurance on me. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. If I fall, I'm going to get back up. And in your life today, you don't have to quit on your marriage. You don't have to quit on people. You don't have to quit on your church. You don't have to quit on serving God. Endure, endure, outlast the devil. Amen. Because the devil's a quitter, right, everybody? And so you preframe it. Thank God for what didn't happen. Preframe it. And finally this. Here we go. Here we go. Look for the goodness of God. Look for God's goodness. Find what you're looking for. If you're looking to see bad things and negative things, boy, you're sure going to find it. If you're going to find challenges, like, yeah, I'm going to have a challenge. But if you want to see good and you want to see positive and you want to see opportunities, and, 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 and if you look at people, people are going to give you a bunch of negative things to look at. Are you with me? But you can look at God through people. And people, you can always believe in people. And that's why a vulture and a hummingbird the vulture looks for dead things, dead carcasses. It will feed. So don't be a vulture in life. Be a hummingbird. They like to move a lot, but they go after the sweet nectar. Amen. And so can you. A therapist will tell you this. You know what? You got to empower your mind to think differently. Reframe your situation. Can I tell you about Jesus and what God would do? God would tell you this. That God is in control. Reframe the situation right now. Let Jesus decide the meaning of your situation. The mind of Christ. The helmet of salvation. It, it will frame the meaning of the situation. Everybody's mad at work. Everybody's, not, everybody's against me. My family, whatever. Let Jesus decide the meaning of the situation today. This, would you agree, was the worst week ever that we've had in our nation uh, we're heartbroken, right? And so this week, um, a, a dear man named John Gonzalez that became like a father to me after my father died. Um, he's not in San Antonio. He was Christina Martinez's grandfather. And I got to see Ermin. I got to visit with him probably about two weeks ago. You know, he was, we ate brisket maybe two and a half weeks ago. We had a good meal there in Baytown. Yeah. Well, he went to the hospital, um, and then they brought him back for hospice to, to pass in his home. And I thought I had enough time to maybe see Johnny one more time and go visit him. I, I was actually going to take Rick Kiefer's example. I was going to take the whole family. I was going to take communion cups. I'd already had my truck packed, and I was just going to go immediately after service because I knew the time was coming to an end. And I was going to take communion. We were going to take communion. I was going Johnny, take communion with me this Final, these final moments, and I got a text at 7.05 this morning as I was at my desk, and Ida, his daughter, told me that Johnny went to be with Jesus yeah, this morning, and so I wanted to see Johnny. Irma told me she brought it back and reframed it. She said, we got to see Johnny. We got to eat a meal with him three weeks ago. You wouldn't have been able to eat a meal. You wouldn't have been able to talk with him and joke with him. There's something about a Mexican dad <laughs> that you can't get. See, when my dad, there, when I would tell Johnny, I would go, I learned this being Mexican. When I would tell Johnny, oh, is Johnny, which means, hey, Johnny, in English. Mexican, if you're really a Mexican, you're going to go, like, oh, is Johnny. If you're a Mexican, you're going to answer like this, uh. <laughs> you're not going to talk. <laughs> you're just going to go, uh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Mexican thing. You don't understand. It's okay. We, we have, every culture has its something. And um, so Johnny's in heaven. Johnny's healed. I'm reframing it. Amen. Johnny's not suffering from congestive heart failure anymore. He has a new heart. Amen. Jesus met him. He gets to be with his daughter. And, uh, and so that's the blessing. This, this week, um, you heard about the Uvalde tragedy. And as I walked um, this week, um, early this week after the tragedy had happened with a group of pastors, we visited Hobbs Elementary and stood right there. Those are pictures. You can go back to the, the, the other one if you could. I want to talk. That, the, what, what struck me now, it's consumed with flowers if you've seen it on the news over and over. Well, there was hardly any flowers. You see that man? That's Jose Flores' um, grand, grand, uh, his grandfather. That's the grandfather bending over. I get that, that's a family member. And he's giving flowers and a balloon to his grandson that tragically died. How could you, if you have any heart, just see something like that. As a pastor, as I stood and we prayed in a circle, 
and ask God to bless that community and heal. I knew that God was there and God is near to the brokenhearted because God was right there. And the crosses that have the names of the two teachers and the 19 students, just um, the moment, the elementary school that looks just like your elementary school that you probably went to. You can show me the next slide now. Thank you, Lisa. You're doing a great job in helping me. So when we left that prayer circle, and by the way, Linda, you know, called and said, I saw you. You were on CBS and you were on the Ken's Five and I recognized you. And so she snapped a picture. And so we made the world news, CBS, and we made Ken's Five of that prayer circle there. And so they asked me a question. Why did y'all come? Why did y'all come to be here? And I said, we came here because God is here. What was the meaning about y'all gathering in a circle to pray like that? We prayed that God would heal families, that God would help people that are right now broken hearted and God would heal the community. You know what the community told me? Because everybody's there. The government's there. The FBI is there. They're everywhere in that area, especially near the school. But you know what they kept telling me? A city manager told me this as he wept and cried. And he told me about the need of the Uvalde city. He said, you know what, this, the, the government's going to leave, the FBI's going to leave, all these people are going to leave, and we're not going to have them when these children go back to school, or they rebuild the school, or whatever they're going to do. And so I want Living Faith to take this message, as much as we're doing what we can right now, I, I applaud the efforts of our, all of us who are pulling together. I think there's ways to reach our children today before I think B and Juan take what they're going to take this week to the San Antonio police officers to do what they're going to do. But what's going to happen when the children go back to school? Of that school? Who's going to be there? And so I want to ask you to dream with me, especially the outreach team, of what we can do in the months to come when everybody leaves that Living Faith can still reach out. There's a great church there that's happening. Pastor Jaime, we're going to get to know him a little bit more. Maybe we can reach through him. Whatever it takes. Amen. There are neighbors. Amen. Yeah, Jesus told us. They asked me, why did you do this? Because Jesus said to love your neighbor. And San Antonio is a neighboring city to Uvalde, right, everybody? And so God is with us as we do that. I'm asking you today to reframe right now, not passively receive circumstances that come at you, but actively pursue something and reframe it and say, no, this is God. God can still show up. God can still be here. God can still help me. I don't have to live that way, everybody. It's not interpreting the circumstance that, and then think of God afterwards. No, put God on the forefront. I'm going to interpret this through the lens of God right now. I'm going to see God in the situation right now, first, right now. What, what actually happened to me, Paul, is actually furthering the gospel. I'm in change, but what actually happened to me, I'm furthering the gospel right now. What actually has happened to you, you're still going to go on. You have to, right? You're not going to be put back. God always can turn something that's bad and make it good if we put it into God's hands. Right, everybody? I, I can't control what's going to happen to you and I, but I can reframe it. Give me a good amen. And you can look at, at it the right way today. If you look for the goodness of God, even in a broken world, you'll find the goodness of God. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that God is no longer welcomed in the public schools? And yet their cross is right in front of the, uh, an elementary public school. Because they know God's our only hope. We need God again in our schools. We need God again. And we go, that, that's a route that needs to be taken right now. Oh, how only God can help us today, right? As a nation today. Amen. Look, look for the goodness of God in every situation. Let's pray. Bow your heads with me and pray. Worship team, if you want to come quietly, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come today. Father, renew our minds with truth today. Holy Spirit, uh, I pray that you would work with the word of God. And there's, there's a connecting force right now. The word is working in the spirit of God. And it's connecting right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we need your help to reframe our mind. You need to re renew your mind right now. The Bible says to renew it, not to be conformed with the patterns of this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind today. It says that. And so you need to see the goodness of God as God's child today. And you haven't. And you're in a season right now where it's framing the clouds 
uh, right now and the doom right now and you want to reframe it right now with the goodness of God, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand even on your head right now. There's a reframing taking place right now. Thank you, Lord. We name that stronghold fear, the waiting season, your relationship right now. Thank you. We see the goodness of God right now. Thank you, Lord. All my life, Lord, you've been faithful. All my life, Lord, you've been so, so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. You promised us life abundant. The devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Little did we know last Sunday when we said that, that he was about to do that to a group of children. And God was there and his heart was broken. Some asked me, why did God allow that? God didn't allow that. We have free choice. We made an evil man made a, a, a choice to do awful things in a school, in Hobbes Elementary. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life abundant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. T turn this situation around in our minds. Turn this situation around right now in our thought processes and our thinking that we have life abundant. As you continue to pray with me. You have no real relationship with Jesus. It's all been, you, you came to church, maybe today you're watching right now. And the real relationship with God is not a religious thing. It's not a form thing. I, I was a good boy or a good person. I came to church. It's not about that. That's just pursuit. That's a religion. And God's about relationship. And relationship is that God is love. And you can love Him. And God wants a relationship with you. God wants to take what's weighed you down with sin in your mind and that sort of thing and lift it. He did that 2,000 years ago. Jesus walked among sinful people. People that were broken. People that were tormented in their mind. And Jesus healed every one of them. Sometimes he did it through an instant. Sometimes he did it as they processed and walked it out. Paul, it took the Apostle Paul to take some time to get his mind right. But he had a relationship with God. And in your life right now, Jesus can be your Savior. He can be, he can be your Savior of your sins right now. He can save you right now. He's a perfect man. He's never sinned. He walked among us but did not sin. In this moment right now, I want to invite you to know Jesus as your Savior to save you right now from your sins. If you're here right now, I just want to see that your hand is lifted slightly. I won't embarrass you. I'll note your hand, but you can lift it right now. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Hands going up. Someone else making sure. God bless you, my brothers. Amen. Mighty men of God. Yes, Miha. Yes, I see a family right there. You can put them down once you put them up. About five, six people. Thank you, Jesus. You're already my brother. You're already my sister. You're my family today. We just do a formal prayer today. At Living Faith, you never pray alone. On screen, hit me up with an emoji. Hand up too. We'll pray for you. We're praying right now. Let's pray. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. We say it strong and loud. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. You're the only one that can cleanse me from all my sins. There are many. Thank you, Jesus. I receive your forgiveness. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. I am forgiven. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Fill your people with the Holy Spirit afresh. There's an assignment that each of them have this week uh, to go in the mission fields of their workplaces, of their neighborhoods, and God will be real. In the name of the Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. All of God's children say amen. Come on, celebrate new life at Living Faith. God's been good to us, right?
Amen. If you're new here um, and never received this book, raise your hand. There's a new believer's handbook. I want you to receive this book as a gift to us. At the Welcome Center, Jill Tuttle's there. You can receive that. She'll pray over it, pray over you, and you want a final blessing. Amen. Make sure you go to our Welcome Center today, and, and that book is free. If you're online right now or watching wherever media source that you're watching as you're streaming, you can order this book. There's information right there, our contact information. Send us information. We'll mail this to you. It'd be our honor to give that to you today. Amen. And so connection uh, cards, make sure you turn those in. If you have prayer requests this week, we'll pray over those. I pray for those personally. Irma and I pray for those. Connection a card, even if you're visiting, make sure you go by and get a Welcome Center gift. We want to make sure you give you that great gift that we have, and we prepared that for you today. In the name of Jesus today, let's receive our tithe and offering today. And thank God for the ability to give. Come on, thank the Lord. Thank God for generous people and living faith. Amen. As, before I end, I want to take a pause today. A man called me this week and he said, Pastor, we're celebrating our 13th anniversary. And I said, Amen. He said, All I want, would you pray for us and bless us? And I, what a man of God. Number one, he recognized we're good things. Amen. See, Pedro Ramirez framed his life that could have been framed along with his family like, like there was bad news. It was clouds like there is in all of our lives. But Pedro said, you know what? God's been good to me. He's given me a bride for 13 years. Amen. And the bright spot is it. Amen. Ju Julie's put up with Pedro. Give me a good amen. <laughs> for 13 years. And he, he says it first today. But he said, you know what? I, I, all I want is prayer that we can go on for another 13 years and another 13 years after that. Amen. And, and so, Pedro, would you come up? Amen. It'd be my honor. Come stand with Irma and I. We extend our hands of faith. Irma, would you come and we'll pray for them? I just, again, found it so significant. Join me on the platform, amen? Here we go. I usually don't ask you to do this. I don't, and um, when a man asks this, I said, how can I not have the goodness of God uh, come, amen? We'll put our arms together, amen, and link arms. And you guys, Elder uh, Copeland, amen, lay your hand on Pedro, amen, bless him. Uh, would, you, um, would you extend your hands of faith towards Pedro and Julie, amen? They're choice people. They're a blessing. This is living faith. When you look at living faith, this is how living faith looks. Amen. Thank you, Father. This is my brother. This is my sister, Lord. And I thank you for the, the holy matrimony, of God, that you brought 13 years ago. Little did we know, Lord, we see battles. We'd see things that would happen, Lord, that weren't of you, Lord. But you've turned them around and you brought blessing from a curse. You brought blessings, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Pedro's just asked, Lord, as the head of a spiritual home. As the head of the home, I, I just want 13 more years. And then maybe 13 more years after that and 13 more. So, Lord, we thank you for multiplication in the name of the Lord, of the goodness of God upon his life today. Bless them abundantly. Bless their marriage. We seal it. We thank you, God. God has been good to us. Amen. To have a couple just like this come into our church. We're blessed, Pedro and Julie. We're blessed that you're part of our family. We love you. Amen and honor you today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. Amen. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. If it was your um, anniversary, amen, we bless you. And it was spoken. Irma and I will be near here along with our elders. And we'll pray for you if you want a blessing also. Let's pray for our tithe and offering today. Never pass an opportunity up, an opportunity up when you're able to give, to give. Whether it be in front of an elementary school, Hobbs Elementary, that you're able to give a prayer. You're able to do something like hug a, a state trooper and say, you see the brokenness in his eyes. And say, God's going to strengthen you, a city official that is in a, a, a city. And say, you're praying for them that they're going to make it and we'll be back to help you soon. Whatever it might be, today you can give towards the purposes of God, towards the plans of God today. Thank you, Father. I pray that we would all be givers today, not takers. In the name of Jesus, we pray it's a giving spirit, that we have a generous spirit because of what Jesus did by giving his only son. In the name of Jesus, bless the tithe and the offering we say over the children of God today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you stand and we give today. Amen. There are several ways to give. <laughs>